Uh, my name is Marcel Cruz. Uh, I'm a researcher at the Cibeles Academy in Helsinki uh, with a folk music department. Um, I'm a musician and maker of, of bagpipes with an academic background in, in architecture. I have measured uh, for my doctoral uh, project, I have measured all the bagpipes over 60 stored in museums of Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Sweden, and uh, Latvia. And Finland, sorry. Um, I want to go into the technical details and my methods. Uh, Szechuan has addressed uh, some of those and you get the sense of the mindset of people with our kind of background in design. Um, <clears throat> so, from intention to action and from action to accomplish object, information is lost and gained. When attempting to draft technical drawings of a physical object, the surveyor is attempting to travel the return path from object to project. Replicating musical instruments raises the question, what was the project or original intention of the maker? The question is always there for any musical instrument of any historical period with different degrees of certainty when attempting this inference. Next. In my research, I encountered musical instruments that were not turned in the lake. They were often made freehand, carved with a pocket knife, revealing finger holes, sometimes at an angle, and conical pores produced by the repeated action of a burning rod. Precise work? No. However, these instru this musical instruments carry the signs of rigor that indicate that they are replicas of one's project-oriented musical instruments. In other words, they represent erudite musical instruments rather than descending from objects of vernacular design. Even in their last uh, vernacular form, they reveal the intuition of a maker looking to reproduce intentions or concepts instead of replicating precise quantitative physical outcomes. Therefore, the maker is accepting the musician as part of the music making process, process or human object entanglement. In my research, each instrument is not a special object that I'm looking to clone. Each instrument rather encompasses the information that represents a type. As in medical science, I am not <coughs> looking to understand any particular person's hand, but rather understand the human hand as a universal entity in an infinite diversity of versions. So how, this, how does this relate to music instrument making and 3D printing? The nature of 3D modeling and printing tempts us to pursue the study of every person's hand. Surely 3D printing uh, prototyping has opened wonderful possibilities for me in both my historically informed research through design approach and in product developed for my workshop. Single instruments <clears throat> are bound to garner our interest and curiosity and be prime candidates for application. In such cases, I have been encouraged by my peers to leave my brain at the door. Just measure and reproduce what is. I understand the scientific sentiment, but I wonder if even with CT scan, we can remain fully impartial. I wonder what cleaning the model entails. In this extremely short presentation, using my research as an example, I just want to provoke a rethinking of how we position ourselves when surveying and replicating musical instruments, regardless of the current and future technological tools at our disposal. As we change our conventional approaches and processes from subtractive and in a chronological order of tasks, deal first, late afterwards, custom tool, uh, make custom tools like reamers, use reamers in a sequence, etc., we might accelerate erroneous inferences that I have witnessed and I am documenting during the revival of back. Next, please. Uh, back one. Uh, if the surveyor does not try to speak the idiom of the original maker, um, that should be gone. It would be more fun. But um, if the surveyor does not try to speak the idiom of the original maker and is unable to wear the hat of the musician, he may be bound to produce false or unrealistic inferences based solely on the physical reality of the one object he is so carefully studying. Data is always good, but once these inferences, extrapolations become data, 
They find their way into the technical drawings and become written in stone. They will then propagate quickly, in this case, at the speed of 3D printing. Again, this accelerated uh, notation graph something very particular to the backpack revival and for physics scene, so there might be some example <laughs> there. Uh, inevitably, the instrument will be played by a human being, the musician, given that from object to project and from project to 3D printed object, information is gained and lost. I argue that as surveyors or producers, we inevitably do add a voice to the instrument. Maybe that is a good thing. Musicians should not be left alone bridging the distance between, between the replicas and the musical or sonic intentions of the original. One last piece. A time machine would be the dream of any historically informed performer. In fact, if we have if we had access to the original uh, maker, let's say Mr. Otter, we would not need to replicate these instruments. Uh, we would travel back in time and order another progressive drum exactly. I many times wonder how capable would he be himself of replicating his own instruments? Really rapidly. We had the answer for that. Probably it was pretty good at replicating. But I wonder that because I try to replicate my own instruments every day at my workshop, and to an extent, I do fail. I certainly fail when comparing it to 3D printing. So what does my failure to replicate mean to our field? Maybe it means that our ultimate goal as makers is not to replicate geometries, but to replicate sonic and musical reserves, results that the musician can live with. Thank you, Thank you very much.